fuel cell is actually a very old device. It was invented back in the late 1800s, and it turns hydrogen into electricity. So when the grid goes down, the fuel cell keeps working. As long as the supply with hydrogen, it's just going to keep working. And it works quiet, it's a smaller footprint, and you can recycle the heat for the building or for cooling. And, uh, it was late at night. We were going about 70 miles an hour down the freeway. I rolled down my window, pulled up to the car next to me, and asked him a question in a normal speaking tone of voice. And they replied to me in a normal tone of voice because these cars make no sound. Petroleum free, so it does reduce our um, petroleum dependency completely. Well, the automakers often refer to a fuel cell vehicle as a no compromises vehicle because you're getting the performance and ease of an electric car with the range and the convenience of taking gasoline. The military is using them for a lot of mission critical missions right now. Um, they use them for the, the unmanned vehicles that go underwater on land. Um, Cisco, huge company based in Houston, using uh, forklifts. South Sierra Nevada Brewery uh, out in California is using it. They they actually make their own hydrogen too from the uh, the brewery waste. Um, they can use that biomass and, and create hydrogen out of it. And they're running their facility with fuel cell. And they said fuel cells enhance every other energy option there is out there, every clean energy option that's out there. Because they're scalable, they make wind better, they make solar better, and they can help batteries. You can think of them as the microprocessors or the servers making the whole clean energy portfolio work better. So it, we say the fuel cells are transforming the energy age, they are also integral to the whole clean energy portfolio and make it all better. Because this industry is going to be here. The choice is, is it going to be homegrown here or is it going to go to Asia and Europe, right?